autoimmune compromise for some reason, either because of an immunodeficiency disease or chemotherapy or something like that. Um, it could be that their immune system just doesn't react well. These are sort of open questions that are in I know. I don't. I need. I need the file. I see. Please let me know when we can start. Madam Camel. Yes, sir. Can you let me know when IT is uh, ready? Yes, well, sir. But we can start. We don't have to wait for Councilwoman Simeo, and we can start in the meantime. I think I think it was about going live on TV also. So oh, let, okay. let me just double check. Okay. okay, I just got a notification that we are ready to go live, and I gave instructions to Councilwoman S.M.A. Irvin to call in. So just let me know when you're ready to start. I'm you're ready. ready. Okay, we're starting now. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today it's uh, Tuesday, December 8, 2020, and it's 104, and uh, this is a virtual North Miami Community Development Agency meeting. And uh, I think uh, this is... Uh, our last meeting for the year for the 2020 and hopefully we had uh, everyone had a wonderful year 2020 hopefully and uh, let's hope for the best in 2021 and now the meeting is called to order madam clerk will call please board member estimate Irvin. here Board member Keys. Here. Board member Galvin. Here. Board member Desselman. Here. Chairman Bienname. Here. Chairman, you have a quorum to proceed. Thank you very much. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now the first uh, item on the agenda is the consent, and uh, it's comprised from. Uh, I move the consent agenda. Unless a member of the CRA board wishes to remove a specific item from this portion of the agenda, tabs A through D constitute the consent agenda. These resolutions and items are self-explanatory and are not expected to require additional review or discussion. These items will be reported as individually numbered resolutions adopted unanimously by the following motion, that the consent agenda comprised of tabs A through D be adopted. I have a motion made by board member Galvin to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? A second. Second. The motion was seconded by Chairman Bienname. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries with a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. Um, 
Thank you to everyone who has attended this afternoon's virtual regular CRA meeting. This meeting will allow live public comment by attendees. Public hearing will take place upon announcement by the chair of the meeting. And from that time, attendees will be able to virtually raise their hand. And this should function similarly to lining up at the podium. Attendees cannot leave their hand raised throughout the entire meeting. So if you raise your hand before an item is read, it will be removed. If you're participating through the GoToWebinar application on your smartphone or computer, please press or click the raise hand icon. But if you're dialing into the meeting by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. From there, I will send you a pin that will allow you to unmute yourself. Please do not forget to unmute yourself and then state your full name and complete address for the record. And remember that you will have up to two minutes to make your comment. Thank you in advance for your understanding and your feedback. Thank you very much. Agenda item number two. Agenda item one, resolution to approve 1155 NOMI infrastructure and tax increment finance TIF grant requests. A resolution of the chairman and board members of the North Miami Community Redevelopment Agency approving the funding for Omega Investors Group LLC for a multifamily residential rehabilitation project known as 1155 NOMI located at 12640 Northeast 12th Avenue and 1195 Northeast 126th Street, North Miami, Florida in an amount infrastructure grant not to exceed $8 million and a tax increment recapture incentive of 50% of projected city and ad, ad valorem tax revenues from the time the project appears on the property tax rolls until the North Miami CRA sunsets approximately 20 years, not to exceed $7 million, authorizing the executive director and North Miami CRA attorney to negotiate and finalize an agreement with Omega Investors Group LLC to provide funding for the development of the multifamily residential rehabilitation project authorizing the executive director to execute the agreement, authorizing the executive director to take all action necessary to implement the terms of the agreement and providing an effective date. Agenda item one. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I know at two o'clock, we're gonna have our regular council meeting and uh, do we have a presentation, Madam yes. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, um, Chairman and board members. Um, before you is a request from Omega Investors Group. I'm going to read a memo that is attached to your package for the record. And also Mr. Sebastian Semla and his part party are also on hold with the PowerPoint presentation to show you um, what they're proposing. Um, before you is this request for $8 million in infrastructure grant and 50% of the city tax increment not to exceed $7 million through the life of the CRA. For this uh, request, the applicant is proposing an eight-story, 384-unit mixed-use project, primarily workforce housing, with 507 parking spaces. The total cost of the construction is estimated at $86,201,000. Um, they are proffering 10% or 38 units for affordable housing, specifically. To ensure proper placement of the 38 affordable housing units, the CRA or its designee will vet North Miami residents and other applicants to ensure affordable qualifications throughout the life of the CRA. Um, additionally, the CRA is requesting the following will be placed in the grant agreement. No more than $8 million can be spent on infrastructure expenditures. A detailed breakdown of expenses will need to be provided prior to the execution of the agreement to accompany the, the grant agreement. 50% of the city TIF not to exceed 7 million through the life of the CRA. They have one year to obtain a site plan approval and subsequently another year to get their building permit. No funds can be dispersed until applicant has secured the loan for the full balance of the cost of the project. Funds will be dispersed on a reimbursement basis following submission of evidence of payment for qualified expenses. And although applicant estimates construction, the project will take 18 months to complete. Funds will be dispersed within 36 to 48 months with final payment released upon attaining final inspection and certificate of occupancy. Um, because we're short on time, I'd like Mr. Sebastian Samla to do his PowerPoint presentation so the public and the board can see what it is that he is proposing. And afterwards, we can answer your questions. Claude, can you prop up Sebastian's PowerPoint, please? <laughs> Thank you.
IT. Mr. Samla, you can unmute yourself and turn on your mic. Sebastian, can you hear us? All right. Um, I will do the presentation to save on time until Sebastian is able to get on track. So, IT, you can press the PowerPoint, please. Okay, next slide. Next slide. All right, this is a rendering of the proposed project that Omega Investors is proposing to do. Um, again, it's an eight story property. This is originally, the, it, they used to call it Nomi Village. Um, it's two properties totaling 176,000 square feet. Right now it has two story buildings um, currently called the, the barracks. Um, and the Omega Investors is proposing to redevelop that whole site to turn it into our first uh, workforce housing development project um, for the city and the CRA. Next slide. All right, the Omega Investors Group has been working with several architects and investors. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, thank. Okay, I'm having issues with the IT department right now. I apologize. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Thank you. The total project size is estimated to be 539,000 gross square feet, including the parking garage. Um, they will have, like I said, it's eight floors, 384 units of workforce housing apartments. The breakdown is to be 16 studios, 189 one bedroom, one bath, a 150 two bedroom, two baths, and 29 three beds and two baths. Again, I had mentioned they would have 507 total parking spaces between the perimeter parking and the structured parking, and they would have retail and commercial space. Next slide. They're proposing several amenities, a rooftop pool, yoga, a retail space for a cafe, a pet spa, um, lobby lounge, um, curated events, um, conference rooms. Next slide. The team that is proposing to do this project is Mr. Sebastian Semla, as you can see in the first picture, and the other partners that Mr. Lago and Mr. Shemtov, who are the financing arm of this project and who have experience in building workforce housing throughout the state. Next slide. The architectural firm that they've um, hired is Behar Fun and Partners. They are the ones that have done the design that you've seen so far and the contracting company that they've hired is NV2A Group. Um, they've already provided us with their total construction costs and based on their experience, they have the capacity to build this project as proposed. Next slide. Oh. Guys, can you hear me? Um. Yes, Vice Mayor. No, 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 once you've done, I have a question. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Total cost of project, the hard costs are estimated at $57.8 million, soft costs, 
21.8 million with other operational costs and contingency fees for a total of 86 million 200,000. Next slide. So the grant request that they're asking us is $8 million in infrastructure grant, about 4 million in electrical infrastructure, 3.5 million in plumbing and sewer infrastructure, and 500,000 to go towards the streetscape, landscaping, bike paths, and public art. Um, and the city TIF, again, the tax increment, the revenue that we will receive once the property is online and has been appraised by the property appraiser once it's built, they're asking for 50% of the city to not to exceed $7 million over the life of the CRA. Um, in my cover memo, I mentioned that we will need a, a specific breakdown of all those costs. So it's for 4 million, for instance, it's not going to be just a $4 million payment. It will have to be broken down and attached to the agreement to make sure that those are allowable expenses that we're re reimbursing them for. Next slide. This is the projected impact and permit fees that the developer is estimating would go to the city of North Miami and Miami-Dade County. Again, these are just estimates. Um, the impact fees to um, would go to the city of North Miami and the permitting and Miami-Dade Public Schools, Parks, Fire would go to Miami-Dade County. Of course, as always, Miami-Dade County always gets a bigger share of the impact and permitting fee, but they're estimating it at $5.6 million. Next slide. All right, fiscal benefits to the city. They're creating 828 jobs and approximately 500 construction jobs. During the construction, based on their uh, market analysis, the construction job will create uh, a fiscal impact of about $41 million as it relates to direct and indirect services using not only the construction, but they would be eating in the city, they would be using city services and businesses and so on. Um, they're estimating that there will be 10 permanent jobs once the project is done. That would be the staff to manage the building um, and all the other services that they're offering. Uh, the estimated direct revenue to NOMI businesses are 10% of the construction cost. Again, that is based on their market analysis from uh, Miami Economic Associates. Um, estimated annual expenditures by 11 NOMI residents. So once the project is done and the 384 units are filled, they estimate, estimate that about $5.9 million of annual expenditures will be coming from those residents that will be coming to city businesses, the city, and to generate the economy in the market. Next slide. So for us, in terms of the 10%, the 38 units that I mentioned earlier that we would have access to in the CRA would ensure that those would go primarily to North Miami residents and that they are qualified in, on the affordable um, housing guidelines. They're proposing to provide us with three studios, 19 one bedrooms, 14 two bedrooms, two three bedrooms for a total of 38 units. So through the life of the CRA, we would have those units available um, for the CRA to ensure that, you know, they are affordable based on the um, affordable statutes and they are available for North Miami residents um, first. Um, next slide. Um, one of the things that Omega Investors is proposing to do is that they've looked at our, the mobility hub plan that the CRA had created with the city of North Miami, I think a year and a half back. They're proposing to do um, a bike lane and a, and a walking path to meet with what the mobility hub had proposed. So they're not just going to focus on the immediate perimeter of their property. They're proposing to continue um, the, path, the bike path from Northeast 14th Avenue to Northeast 7th Avenue along 127th Street. So that's another additional um, idea that um, they are proposing to do. One of the things that we talked about was collaborating with Mocha Museum and to possibly have an artist help create an artistic uh, type of uh, mural pathway as part of the bike path to continue linking Mocha Museum art and you know all the projects that the city and the Sierra are working on. Next slide. So in summary, um, these are the benefits that Omega Investors Group are proposing. They will, this will be the first brand new workforce housing stock in the city of North Miami. We haven't had any new inventory in about, I think like uh, at least two decades. 
based on what I remember from the FIU analysis. It'll estimate to generate $5.7 million in revenue. Um, it'll improve property values in the surrounding areas. Um, it's estimated to generate approximately $22 million in new tax revenue through the life of the CRA. It'll definitely attract new businesses and opportunities to Nomi's downtown core and its surrounding area. It'll create new job opportunities and encourage our residents to stay and live in North Miami. And they, will, they intend to provide alternative mode of transport with a new bike lane, electric car charging, bus shelters, um, as per our mobility hub. In, con in conclusion, uh, black slide. There we go. Um, Omega Investors' motto is loyal to our com community. Everything at 1155 Nomi is rooted in respect to the culture, people, and the environment. Um, I hope I did a good presentation. I apologize. This was supposed to be the developer doing the presentation, but we're short on time. So if the board has any questions or if there's any public comments. Thank you very much. Let's open it to the public first. Public, oh, public in is open on tab uh, one. item number one. one. At this time, if you would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. By clicking on the raise hand icon or pressing star nine if you're dialing in. Claude, just so you know, my view doesn't show uh, any of that, any of the attendees, it just shows staff. I do have one previously submitted public comment. Mm -hmm. And so I will start with that. Claude, I can't see questions or anything. So Nicholas, Sandy, and Deborah Davies, 1165 Northeast 127th Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Dear CRA board members, we live on the north side of Northeast 127th Street, facing the property in question. We and our neighbors in single family homes are delighted to finally see the CRA moving ahead to renovate this blighted property, but we have some concerns. First of all, the residents of single family homes in our neighborhood around the property would like to be kept informed and consulted on these plans as we have not been informed or involved at all up to this point. In particular, we are concerned about parking and traffic flow around the development and the landscaping of the property. There is heavy traffic on Northeast 12th Avenue on school days, especially at the beginning and end of the school day, currently diminished due to COVID. And on Northeast 127th Street, there have been bad accidents with cars racing up and down these residential streets and crashing into residences' yards, fences, and walls. A traffic circle at Northeast 127th Street and Northeast 12th Avenue would be an effective way to prevent that. Also, there must be adequate parking for residents of the renovated apartments on the south side and the inside of the property, but not on the outside of the property facing our single family homes on Northeast 127th Street. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. There's Public one hand raised. Number one. Mm -hmm. So Claude, you'll have to call on, on anyone whose hands are raised because my view does not allow me to see attendees or hands raised. Sure thing. Oh, there's two hands raised. There's the first one is Sarah McDevitt. I'm going to Thank unmute you your much. microphone right now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Very excited to see this project. Um, finally getting to stages where we can see what the plan is. And I'm really happy to um, see that they incorporated elements in the mobility hub into their plans. As mentioned by the earlier commenter, the building will be a significant change in height and density to what the neighborhood is accustomed to right now and just ensuring that the setbacks on the north side of the development are um, considering the neighborhood and that you know there's plenty of <laughs> opportunity for parking on the property versus on the street so that the neighborhood doesn't have an overwhelming influx of new people parking on swales and in yards in areas where there wasn't so much traffic that's it but very excited to see this project thank you thank you very much the second the second hand raised is carmela Furman. 
I'm going to unmute you now. Hello, everyone. Um, Carmela Furman, 12530 Northeast 4th Avenue. Um, I think this is a great project, and it's nice to see the area um, getting the much needed improvement. Um, of course, like both um, other residents have mentioned, um, it'll be, re be really important to make sure that the residents that surround that property are kept in the loop as to what's going to happen. Um, I guess the only thing I would want um, to be considered is, you know, as we keep adding more people to the population with the added developments, it'll be good to kind of begin looking at what our police department can do about speeding in our city. Um, I think that's going to be really important, not only to actively go after speeders and create an environment where it's not allowed in our city and also um, you know patrolling of areas that are now going to have a lot more people um, residing within them that's it thank you thank you very much public and still open do we have anybody else any hand raise currently there are no more hands raised there was one question submitted Yes. Do you have it? it is. Madam? Madam no, Sibu, I, I don't believe she can see it. Okay. It says, hi, this is Viviana Gutierrez, 461 Northeast 134th Street. Would these units be available for sale or will all of this be rental? Thank right. you very much. Can you, for the record, can you say your no. name and uh, Claude? For um, the Claude Charles, IT Assistant Director for City of North Miami. Thank you very much. Okay, we don't have any more hand raised. No, that was it, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, let's bring it back to the members of the board. Councilman Galvin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for Rasha, just one question. The $8 million price tag, does that freeze us out from doing any other projects during the year? Or is this within the parameters of what you'd planned for? It is, it, it, thank you. That's a very good question, um, Councilman. Thank you. It is within the parameter and also that's why I have it tied with the 36 months. So it's budgeted over a certain number of years based on the completion of the project. So it's not gonna freeze us out um, we are going to uh, eventually take less um, applications because we have another one coming. We have two other applications coming that are large in scale, similar and on workforce and affordable housing. Um, but after that, we would do something smaller, entertain something smaller. One of the reasons why I think this is a great opportunity is this is our first brand new workforce project being proposed. And it's a great opportunity for the city and the CRA to, to get involved in something like this. Cool. And I just want to say to uh, Miss Estimate Irvin, I like your Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my questions. There. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I don't know if I can go with it. Do, after you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, you want me to go first? Go no, on, on my question, and you have two residents uh, and that's talk uh, about the project and the concern is parking and setback. And uh, for Matt Anderson, uh, Madam Executive Director, we're going to have 507 parking inside the project. Um, inside in the perimeter, yes. They're going to build a structured parking and also we'll have some in the perimeter, like some street um, parking as well. Um, okay. And also, Mr. Chair, um, this request is for the financing. They still have to go through their site plan approval process, which requires them oh, to... Okay, okay. City, At that point, we're going to make sure, city. okay. Yes. yes. I was going to address the setback for the north yes. side, but it's going to be on the side plan. I don't have to talk about it. Okay. And $2.5 million for sewer and infrastructure, right? From that $8 um, million. It's out of the $8 million, yes. And again, like I said, million. it's not going to be one check. It'll be broken down, so they will have to provide us the breakdown to make sure that those are actually allowable infrastructure expenses. Um, it'll be tied to the agreement, and that's how we will reimburse them. That uh, sewer infrastructure, it's only for the site or around the site to connect to the city? 
some of it will be primarily for the site itself but they can use it also for the surrounding part of the site to you know for instance if they're the sewer is not getting to that property they need to connect to it then it, it's allowed thank you very much and uh councilwoman it's Simi Irvin. Councilwoman Isime Urban. Oh, sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. I'm using a different device because I was having problem okay. with original device. Thank you so much. Um, so, a question for um, Mrs. Camo. Um, you mentioned that what is the anticipated dollars that you believe that they will use for the fiscal year? Um, because I'm just a little bit concerned that we have to sh close the application process earlier than we, I mean, you're saying only one or two others? Large scales. Um, for instance, if it was something smaller like Golden Hill, which was a $600,000 request, that okay. it's, it's manageable. However, this is an $8 million request and we have two other items. Um, actually, one of them is Brooks Park that um, the developer is making an, a, a request. So those are large projects, affordable housing projects. Again, re remember that it's this Madam Executive Director, can we focus on the project today? Yes, yes, sir. I'm just explaining Go to the Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Council Roman. Yeah. I'm just trying to find out the anticipation of out of the eight million, how many would be used this fiscal period is what I'm saying. I don't Roman. anticipate I don't anticipate any for this fiscal year. I anticipated would be for the following fiscal year. Um, based on they have to get their site plan approval, they have to get their building permit. If you look at the timeline, you're, they're making the reservation now, but the first uh, allocation wouldn't come until you know 2021 in October. Based on my estimate, although they say they would start in July, but you know how things are going, I estimate it won't really kick in until October. So, right, so I, just want there to be, I just want there to be an opportunity that, and I, you know, I am in uh, this project looks great. I'm gonna have nothing against it. I always just want the opportunity for our mom and, and pop businesses to still be able to get in a piece of the pie is what I'm just saying. That's yes, all. that's the two different pots of money. And yes, they would have access to it, madam. Thank you. Okay, what what councilman is may want to make sure is like we don't tie uh, the CIA budget to those big yes. scale of projects and we don't have money for the small business. And uh, and okay, but we, I will ask my question after that. Are you done, councilman is Yes. I have, thank you. Woman, please. Can you unmute yourself, Councilwoman? Yeah, I have, I have a few things. Uh, project is excellent. This has been a horribly blighted city block. Uh, a couple of them have been burnt and have been at, you know, their condemnation. They're not even livable. It, it's, it's been a really good den, so I really appreciate uh, I'm very excited about the prospect of such a fantastic, high-quality project going there that's going to give us what those housing. Um, I've looked at the numbers, but I think the presentation today didn't really reflect um, the actual money, uh, taxes that we will be receiving. Uh, I know building permits can't go into our general fund, but the impact fees can. And we didn't get that those numbers, but we're almost getting this money will actually come back in not that long a time. So the money we're going to, $8 million grant, I think we're going to receive most of that money uh, in taxes, fees, and income uh, in, in not too long a period of time. Uh, I was also concerned because we do have a couple other projects, affordable workforce housing coming up. they have been in the works for several years, so uh, I have been assured that there will be money as we spread it um, along that we will have that money. Uh, one project that hasn't been mentioned that I want to make sure we are able to is if we, if the CRA needs help with the building of the train station on 123rd, um, we want to make sure that we would be able to do that if we got permission to have a train stop there. 
is one of the requirements is we get our train stopped, we've got to build the station. And the CRA is one of the um, places. So, Rasha, you, you, you confirmed that we would be able to get funding to do that? Yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, yeah, but can we focus, day. Madam C Executive Director, we need a, let's focus on the project, but I said we not. We're going to maybe need a financial analysis on everything to know what will be of future revenue. But now let's, can we discuss the project? I'm, that project, I'm, on, the project. I'm on the project, but I don't want to give all our CRA money as much as I like this and not be able to do some very other important things. Uh, the train station is for everyone. And I just want to make, and this other project I've been working with for about six years, I want to make sure they have funding too, because we held them up for several years. They should have already been, they should have already been up, but we, the city has held them up. Uh, so I just want to do that. Um, we didn't, I didn't really get an answer on street parking. Uh, but 127th Street, they're talking about bike pass. Um, well, we, I would hope that the CRA or someone could fix up the swales. I have a few residents who do live across the street that I've tried to get their swales fixed for many years. And we have a project of this magnitude and beauty. We need to do something with the swales across the street to comprehend it. Because right now, the swales are just uh, gravel. So that's something I want to look at, and um, as as far as you know, traffic. Um, and I'm just hoping we can. Oh no, that not traffic, but uh, citizen input. When this first came up a couple a year ago or so, the developer and his, his lobbyist was supposed to be in constant contact. That was after the first town hall meeting with the residents. They know who they are, so. I would like to continue to maintain a very open conversation so the residents can have their input and are apprised along the way what's going on. And if we need to do a new town hall meeting after all this is approved, uh, we should do that because we had started that. I don't want that to stop. Mm -hmm. And that's I mean, otherwise, I you know I'm good with this project. Okay. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor Desulmay. Yes, um, Mr. Mayor, I have similar concern um, and questions in terms of that. Grasha, is this the biggest um, amount that we thus far we, we have um, asked the CRA as, in terms of um, tasks? This is the biggest project and the biggest amount. Okay, yes. and, but you said we do have um, we do have enough for other projects that are coming up. Okay, in yes. terms of that. The, my, my only concern that I saw through the presentation, and I don't know if um, Sebastian or any of the people who are involved are there, I did not see any minority um, participation in, the, in, in um, the, the project, and I'm very concerned about that. So what is the minority um, participation in terms of that, or is there a type of requirement for such um, project um or, or i know we do it in the city is there a such within Thank the cra you. yes sir um not only do they have to provide do every effort to meet at least 10 percent of uh, local preference creating mm -hmm. jobs for residents and small businesses it i didn't mention this part but it is in our not only an interlocal agreement with miami-dade county but it's also in our agreement that they have to provide community benefits in terms of high, hiring local labor workforce and um, small businesses to, to do the project. And also follow the living wage ordinance and conflict of interest and code of ethics ordinance. So I, I, I skipped that section, I apologize, Vice Mayor. But yeah, it no, is. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. So, th so they have met those with um, the proposal that they have in terms of... Um... They will. Right oh, they now will. they're... Yeah, they're making the request for the funds and making a reservation of their future taxes. Yeah, Once okay. the agreement is negotiated um, by the attorney and myself, um, and they've gotten their loan, because that's the other part, they have to show that they've secured the loan for the rest of it, 
and they're going through the process of the site plan approval, then you need to start showing the local, um, you know, hiring yeah. local, the right. fair, so on and so forth. Okay, because I know um, the community action plan based on uh, our okay. plan. And last question, one of the slide that you showed um, showed that parks in the road, um, there's a $3 million um, infrastructure that's going in. Is that the county or that's going to us? I think it's the county. So I just want to confirm. The total, yeah, that's the county. That's the county, okay. parks, okay. and fire, and road uh, the okay. county always Our portion, yeah, for the life of the CR is $22 million that we will be getting um, in terms of the, of the project. The CRA, the yes, we are estimated yeah. to receive that amount through life of the CRA for tax um, in the tax okay. revenues. And so they, that's why they're asking for 50% up to 7 million. Yeah, I just wanna echo what um, Councilwoman Keyes um, stated. It's, it's important that um, that the team do get with the, um, the homeowners because I think they are very, um, these are not folks who are opposed to the project, but they do wanna be, um, on notice and know what's going on. And a lot of these, um, and you know, questions could be answered if they are, you know, up, up front and knows what uh, part of the process or know what's, what's happening. That's basically it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And especially on the north side of the project, you have those, uh, single family home. And I think, uh, the developer need to work with those residents in order to address then con the concern as far as uh, and the swell improvements. That mean if you're gonna have a project across this street, I'm pretty much sure they're gonna make sure and uh, they did the improvement on the north side of the swell and as far as height and uh, the eight-story building, they're gonna have the same height on both sides. And uh, executive director. Um, I would rather defer to the first. Because the staff side is most likely commercial, but on the on one twenty seven, it's residential. Yes, the present the PowerPoint that showed us the layout shows an eight story building all around. But again, like I said, they have not done the site plan approval process with uh, the city zoning planning and zoning department. So they'll probably have to do some tweaks as they move along. The process okay i'll so work with the residents to have the agreement thank you yes. very much since there is no more question can i a motion to approve item number one so I second uh, that second i have a motion made by board member galvin to approve the item uh at agenda item one the motion was seconded by board member keys all in favor aye aye any opposed the motion carries with a 5-0 vote. Agenda item two, downtown Nomi redevelopment update. Okay, can you put up the PowerPoint slide for Kevin Crowder, please? IT and Kevin, can you unmute yourself and turn on your mic? I know we're short on time, so um, Kevin, can you reduce your presentation to five minutes, please? Yeah, I'll try and I'll, I'll get through it. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Okay. Okay. Please. Who's that? There's a pin. Congratulations. Mr. Sebastian Slama, could you please put yourself on mute if you're not speaking? All right, Kevin, you can start. IT, can you put it on the PowerPoint slide, please? Right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, we'll, I'll try and be brief, as Ross mentioned. I know you're you're running out of time. Uh, just want to give you a quick update, a few of the things on on the downtown redevelopment project, especially mainly give you a summary of some of the public input. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. 
Um, just briefly on the due diligence, uh, most of it's been completed. A couple of pieces are still in the works, uh, getting a second appraisal on the city parcel, as well as wrapping up. I think all of the department meetings have been done on what the space needs analysis is for, for the city operations. Uh, next slide. Uh, these are some of the things in the discussions ongoing with the city, um, kind of the main things still being discussed that will then lead into the RFP document, um, the land and the disposition of the land. Uh, we've reviewed the development capacity and basically on the from the residential side, uh, just over 700 units in the current zoning uh, in the overlay. Um, talking about sort of the placement of the public facilities, either within this side or one of the things that's come up, I think in some of our conversations as well as public input is maybe relocation of uh, some of the public facilities such as the police station. We're looking at different scenarios that we may see in terms of a deal structure and the financial projections, both here as well as for your overall sort of five-year work plan that we'll discuss in uh, over the next few weeks. Next slide. Uh, public engagement, a very good discussion at DAPAC. Uh, we had a number of virtual open houses. I know some of you were able to attend uh, those, uh, some one-on-one -on -one meetings, and then surveys. So we'll go into the next slide and just touch on some of the information that we got. Um, in looking at the survey information, you know, reasons for visiting downtown North Miami, dining and shopping, as you would expect in the downtown, but also City Hall up there uh, and MOCA. And then you'll see some other traditional downtown uses. Uh, next slide. Uh, how much time do you spend? A lot of transient use, 40% less than an hour. So coming in, looking to do things, and then moving on. And then an additional 30%, so 70% of the visits uh, from the respondents are under two hour visits. So looking, you know, what are opportunities to increase that? Um, the, the desired development types, Dining and retail, but also very high up there, art and culture and entertainment. Um, and, and entertainment and experience you know, is becoming more and more and more important for downtown redevelopment revitalization. Next slide. Uh, we asked how reluctant are you to walk or bike in or to downtown Domi? Um, 50%, just almost 50% said they're not reluctant to do so. And those that were reluctant were split about half and half some very reluctant and, and others somewhat reluctant. So you think that, you know, those that are very reluctant are likely, they have what they need to do in downtown North Miami, they're driving in, they're parking, they're doing it and they're leaving. Um, so we did wanna, wanna dig into that a little bit more, which is on a couple of upcoming slides. Next slide. Um, we did look at experience. How would you, what would enhance your experience in downtown North Miami? You know, and when we talk about online shopping, when we look at who your competition is, whether it's other downtown or urban areas or districts or shopping centers, really experience has become more and more and more important. So, you know, parking, less traffic, shade trees, number one, crosswalks and lighting, safety. When you look at this, I mean, parking is kind of throughout downtown, but when you look at this, it's really Northeast 125th Street is establishing the defining the experience for a lot of people, I think, especially when you think of the things that would enhance their experience, at least. They're all things that kind of connect to 125th Street. Uh, next slide. Uh, business types of people would like to see restaurants and shopping, as you would expect in a downtown, drinking places, office related services, but the artist galleries is much higher on your survey than we see in a lot of downtowns. And I think that speaks to the presence that you already have in art. It speaks to the presence of MOCA, other cultural activities and events you do. So that's something you want to protect and something you're gonna to wanna to preserve, both when you think about the downtown redevelopment project, but also just in terms of downtown revitalization in general, not limited just to what we've been calling the super block. Next slide. Oh, we asked them these questions. These are, we like to frame sort of these five questions or five five words to kind of get, get some concepts. So opportunities, again, preserving arts and culture, obviously your small businesses, the enhancements really come back to those things that help define someone's experience. Those are enhancements people would like to see. Things to expose. These are the things that you have that we want, we want to increase awareness. MOCA, culture, your unique stores. 
Um, again, the investments come back to those investments that create those experience enhancements and capitalizing on MOCA culture, uh, your dining opportunities, et cetera. Next slide. So just a few insights we looked, looked at. We, we left some open-ended questions that people could just fill out. So just kind of looking through those things that negatively impact included uh, parking and traffic, safety slash crime. Safety is not limited to crime. It can come back and be about traffic and, and the, the walkability as well. Um, comments about having, you know, wanting stores that better reflect the community. Um, cleanliness. When, what could increase visitation to MOCA? We saw two different categories of, of answers there. We saw things that were MOCA specific that were the desire for a wider range of types of exhibits, uh, desire for more interactive and again experience, experiential exhibits, but also more awareness of what was, was going on at MOCA. And then we had other things and, and just as much as many of the comments were not specifically about MOCA in terms of what would increase that visitation, again, it was better experiences around MOCA, more things to do in the area around MOCA in downtown. Uh, comments about the need for infrastructure, that there is a lot of potential, though, for downtown North Miami. People do see that potential. Uh, next slide. And then we asked for any other insights that people have. Um, just again, give us their words, what, what they see uh, in an ideal vision for downtown. And so here you'll see a word cloud of some of those concepts that came out, the dining, the art, safe streets, shops and family, et cetera. Um, so that's just a quick summary of, of coming out of some of that public input that we wanted to come and come and bring you. I think it's very insightful, not just for this, the, the specific project, but for your downtown revitalization efforts overall, as you think about different projects that you're, that you're doing. And thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? I see none. Madam Executive Director, the last word. Uh, no, um, you know, again, we're right now we're working with the city on, you know, some ideas and terms in terms of the public facilities. Um, as soon as we're able to come back to the board with some updates, we'll obviously brief you and, and present it to the next CRA board meeting. I know we only have four minutes left, but Again, I just want to bring up that we have several vacancies on the Sierra Advisory Committee. If you can quickly maybe appoint some uh, new members. I have, one, so I, <laughs> I have an application for Pierre Franz Charles. I'll second that. A question, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Which position? Yes, go ahead. A question, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Which position would this go to fill? His position. Madam Chair, um, excuse me, Rasha, mm -hmm. clarify for me again what positions we have open because I have somebody as well and I. No, uh, oh. you for District 1, you need, a you need to fill a business. You have a resident, Mike McDermott, already, and then we have two vacancies at large. But this is the chair filling his position because you each get one resident, one business. Got that. Talk to me about the at large, please. What what do we They're have? Open? Vacant. One resident, one business vacant. Okay. See, the one I have does not have any business, so I'll just have to let them know. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Scott, you said you 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 were um I thought you were gonna um earlier um Madam Executive, I um I think he, he was gonna do instead of um Kevin. Yeah, he was uh, gonna do it. Yeah, I was actually going to nominate Evan Shields for the resident at large. So all of oh, a sudden, okay, that's fine. Whichever it doesn't board. matter. I already right. told um, um, Kevin Seifry that um, you 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 told the executive director you have um, a nominee, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but I don't since I don't have any business person either at large or in my district. I will not be nominating Mr. Shields. He's a resident of my district, but I don't have a position open there. So I'll now let the mayor finish his part. <laughs> okay. My is a Pierre Francois. And that is your business vacant. appointment, Chairman? What happened? That is for the business vacancy? No, residence. So the at-large resident? 
Madam Executive Director, you said I have a, an appointment, right? Yeah, business at large. <laughs> a business vacancy in your in your nomination. And in at large. Already have a resident, right? Uh, yes, Mr. Clark, Edwidge Clark. Who? Edwidge Clark. <laughs> Is not my. Is it mine? Yes, sir. Okay. We have Pierre von Charles. He's a resident, from, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So you will put him at large, sir. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Adam Clark. I have a motion made by. Chairman Bienname to appoint Pierre Clench Charles to the North Miami CRA committee as an at-large resident appointee. The motion was seconded by board member Estimate Irvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries with a 5-0 vote. So who do we have? What, what do we have left, Rasha? Um, the mayor's missing a business. Councilman Galvin's missing a business. Councilman Estime Irvin is missing a business. We're all bus it's all business. Oh, I I'm, mi I'm missing a business as well? No, you're fine. You have Ms. Ashaki okay. Bronson Marcellus as your business and Blanca Cobra as your business. Mm -hmm. Next question, please. Councilman Galvin. Uh, I'll be very quick, Councilman Keys. Rasha, please record, recruit more business people. <laughs> Because <laughs> all of a sudden we had all of these residents. Something must have happened. All of these residents. Some of them are, have businesses, um, Scott. Some of the residents, they are businesses. Are they qualified, um, Rasha, if they own a business? Yes, as long as the business will be in the city, but they also must not be applying for any CRA grants or intend to apply for a CRA grant. So we did have some businesses, as you recall, like Dr. Moyes, but he had to leave because he applied and got a grant. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like somebody with a Mary Kay, they're not going to apply for nothing. Okay. Okay. Councilman Keys, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah, I do. One, I'd like to see some businesses in our CRA uh, be appointed uh, on 120. I'd love someone on our 125th Street corridor to, um, if we could find someone who is in. But secondly, what what is the anticipation of the timeline? Because I have people to a point, but you know they work and they can't attend meetings at two, you know one o'clock in the daytime. And Unfortunately, I'm, you know next. So what are we going forward next year? What are we looking at for time wise? I'm following the I'm following the city's lead in terms of the virtual meetings and again making sure that IT is available to run these meetings. Um, I think one of the issues is, is staff support and you know overtime. So I, I'm you know I'm relying on the city manager's office to let me know what we will be able to do for the next coming year. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And now, do you have any reports from? The CIA attorney or the executive director of the CIA. If none, can okay. I hear a motion to adjourn? Mayor, we had some uh, submitted comments that would technically just be for uh, public comment. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Let's, open, let's, let's go back well, to... Wanda Pasmino, 13504 Northeast 23rd Place, mm -hmm. North Miami, Florida, 33181. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I do not agree that our tech development would be approved to receive CRA funds based that the development would not improve the quality of life to my neighbors or the community in general. Also, there are plenty of current businesses and homeowners who are in need of improving their infrastructure for their business and home. I feel we as a community must first make sure that our current businesses have been given the help they need to continue to functional and operational in the city. This development, once again, will not bring quality of life, but bring disruption with the following issues. Parking, crime, if the closed off areas open up. Garbage collection already issued with bulk pick and, pick and a dumpster will be required. There is already a major sewage issue that needs to be resolved, not add to, and the developer has not been transparent and the units would be owned or leased. Again, I ask the council to deny the request and focus on helping those who are part of our community and truly need the funding to continue to flourish. Thank you for listening. Madam City George Clerk. Michael, my name
I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of the company that was referenced at the top of that comment. Mundy for Art Tech slash Gabriel Art Tech Development. I'm not familiar with the Madam Russia. Do we, Madam Russia? Go against what project? Uh, Art Tech Development. And uh, we do not have an application for that. Okay. Thank you. George Jorge Rugel, 451 Northeast 126th Street, North Miami, Florida 33161. I am in opposition of an applicant, 475 North Miami LLC, receiving a NECRA money due to the destruction of quality of life that their development will impose upon us. The applicant has purchased a home in a quiet residential cul-de-sac in North Miami with the intent of tearing it down to make space for a parking lot supporting a seven-story, 29-unit apartment building. Furthermore, the applicant plans to divert all exist all exiting traffic through the cul-de-sac this is devastating to our cul-de-sac and neighborhood at large dumping all this traffic into our quiet cul-de-sac is not right this is ruining our quality of life and peaceful neighborhood this development is not addressing blight and is not improving our neighborhood's quality of life it is doing the exact opposite this will also create parking issues with folks looking for and parking in our grass areas the proposed walkway access to our cul-de-sac will also create issues with increased foot traffic into our cul-de-sac please save our cul-de-sac and decline any cra money to this terrible project below you will find a photo of our beautiful cul-de-sac neighborhood pointing out the home they plan to tear down along with our quality of life thank you madam city, madam city clerk madam city clerk is at, is it for the next meeting or for the CRA? The precise is for CRA? CRA, and so I technically would have to read them into the CRA's record because they're submitting items okay. for a CRA. Okay. Lauren Landry, 385 Northeast 131st Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Please accept this communication from a concerned resident regarding consideration for utilizing CRA parentheses public funds to help finance a proposed project that not only doesn't qualify under any of the CRA funding guidelines, but actually is opposite of its intent. This project is a cancer happening in our neighborhood, a phenomenon perceived to be evil or destructive and hard to contain or eradicate. There is absolutely no enhancement to our residents' quality of life. In fact, this project will destroy the area's quality of life. Parking is only the first of the many obvious hardships this will place on, a, on the community. This development has substandard plans for parking or any other ingress egress. The option of utilizing a single family neighborhood as a developer's toilet bowl is a shameful consideration. Parking garbage pickup increased crime from pedestrian access to the neighborhood directly from 125th, lack of sewage capacity slash infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is only disaster attached to these plans for our neighbors. Neighbors who have made a quiet, comfortable home and neighborhood around the Pocket Park and Olive Griffin Park area that is the envy, envy of many communities. It seems like our own city is determined to destroy this tranquility. To use taxpayers, open parentheses, CRA, close parentheses, money to facilitate this destruction is unconscionable. With concern, Lauren Lambert. Thank you very much. And I think Gutierrez, 461 Madame Northeast Madame 134th Street, North Miami, Madame Florida, 31661. Since those comments uh, wasn't for any of the project that been approved today, I think uh, we can read the rest at the next CIA meeting. May uh, Chairman Bienname, they have to be read at this meeting. They were sub submitted for this meeting for this CRA board. Yeah, but without of time or see how it's one hour. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have council meeting at two o'clock. How many more comments and opportunities for the meeting at two o'clock? Read into the record. They have to be read into the record. Madam, ma Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can ahead. we ask the C CRA attorney for his legal opinion? It's what we pay him yeah. for. Yes. <laughs> Steve, what do you say? Do we need to read them all now? How many more are there? Two more. How many? This, two more after this one. One of them won't have to be read because it was submitted after the deadline. So it will just be entered into the record. Uh, I mean, I, I would suggest that you can just enter them into the record if there's a time certain and the meeting has to end. Um, and then we can read them at the next meeting if you would prefer. 
um, or we can go a couple more minutes and have the clerk just read them quickly. It's 2.09. They'll be read quickly. They're very short comments. Okay, go ahead. For this meeting. Thank you. Viviana Gutierrez, 461 Northeast, 134th Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Dear CRA Board, I'm writing regarding the 475 North Miami LLC project, which is a 29-unit apartment building that is planned to be built on the vacant lot located at 475 125th Street and 470 Northeast 126th Street, which is located which is a lot located in the 126 cul-de-sac. This cul-de-sac already has issues that need to be fixed, including the sewer issues caused by the rotted sewer pipes that the city needs to look into and repair. It also has garbage and bulk issues caused by the apartment building located at 485 125th Street that already exists. You can see the piles of garbage in the cul-de-sac just by driving by. These are issues that need to be solved before a new structure is allowed to be built, adding 29 apartments to this already crowded area. And speaking of crowded, the traffic issues that will arise from the 29 new apartment tenants and their guests. This project does not belong at that location. I asked the board to talk to the cul-de-sac residents that are North Miami owners that help put you in office to see how they feel about this project. I can tell you they are not happy and neither are their fellow residents that live in the area and use Northeast Fifth Avenue every day. I ask you, as a longtime North Miami resident, to not allow this to happen. Robert Rainey, 460 Northeast 126th Street. There is an apartment complex that is proposing to be built on 425 Northeast 125th Street. During a town hall, the developer, Gabriel Boano of Artex, stated that he would be submitting an application to CRA for funds. Mr. Bonanno stated that he does not intend to do any infrastructure upgrades or improvements while adding over 40 beds to a sewer system that we as residents repeatedly have problems with sewage backing up into our homes. I am writing to request that no CRA dollars are allocated to this project as it appears to be a misappropriation of funds. Thank you. A comment by Cynthia Ordaz will be entered into the, the uh, record as well. Thank you very much. Uh, can I your motion to adjourn? If, yes, Councilwoman Esteem Irvin. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to state on the record that um, the reason why we're getting all of these comments is um, earlier um, last week, um, we had a town hall meeting about a project that that is coming to the CRA. In that meeting, it was indicated that there was an interest to fill for the application, but it was clearly stated to the um, the. Mm -hmm residents in the that were on the town hall and i just want the residents of the district that did not participate in this town hall to know that like our executive director just mentioned there is no application um submitted to the cra and that was clearly stated um in the town hall so i just wanted to make sure that the residents that again did not participate are aware um of that okay thank you thank you motion to adjourn so Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very uh, much and uh, happy holidays uh, and see you next month. Motion to adjourn carries with a 5-0 vote. Thank you very what much. Time Thank you. What time